Hey guys, you're watching Coffee Talk with Father Brad, where we drink coffee and then we talk about Jesus. <laughs> There's definitely no coffee in this one. I just don't, I want to go to sleep later. Um, sometimes in my life as a priest, I'll have an encounter with someone, I'll be talking with someone, and it dawns on me. Some simple aspect of the mass or the priestly life is very simple to me and commonplace and it's easy for me to understand because I've been doing it so long and I've been around the church and I went to seminary for nine years but to others it might be foreign and they might not even understand why it's happening or what it means and so I don't want to go past any little bitty minute aspect of the mass and expect everyone to understand the whys and the hows and the what's going on. And so the thing that I'm going to talk about today has to do with the chalice. Often you might see presented to the altar um, the chalice in a veiled way, right? It's called with a chalice veil on it or a dressed chalice. And um, I'll, I'll be showing pictures of this or videos of this. And it is with the chalice as the base, then a purificator on top, then a paten, which holds the uh, the host that will become the precious uh, body or the the, the holy uh, blessed sacrament, and that's the celebrant's um, celebrant's host. Usually, it's a little bigger than the others. Um, and then you have a pall. Okay, think of the, the the garment that you lay on a casket. It it goes over it um, just to hold it down. It's also something you can put on the chalice in order to make sure that nothing flies in, like no bugs or anything. Um, and then you have a corporal on top of that. Okay, the corporal literally comes from the same word as body, right? Corpus. Um, and because it is there to protect the fragments of the body of Christ, um, the Eucharist, you know, it, 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 it's real stuff. It's, it's, it started as real bread. And so there's crumbs and, and we want to be uh, good stewards of the Blessed Sacrament. And so that you might see is folded in a certain particular way in order to um, contain it. So you fold it back, fold it forward to the side, to the side. That's important. You might not have never known why. Why are they folding it that way? Well, it's because to protect the Eucharist. Um, and then on top of all that, as you undress the chalice, is a chalice veil sometimes. Now, the theology of veiling has its roots all the way back in the Old Testament. The most prominent place is in the exodus from Egypt to the, to the Holy Land. And, and Moses receives on Mount Sinai instructions for the building of the tabernacle. And that tabernacle has a holy of holies, and that place is veiled. There's a there's a covering. In fact, on the sheet that stands in front of the holy of holies, was painted or, or um, put an artist rendering of the cosmos. Um, and so, the Ark of the Covenant itself is veiled. And every time they're taking it through the desert, there's a there's a, a processional tent that goes over it. Um, it's because you veil that which is holy. This is one of the reasons why women have been veiled. Um, think of images of the Blessed Mother. Think of little girls when they receive First Communion. And at one point, it was the, the general practice and a good practice of the church to, for women to veil when they went in before the Blessed Sacrament, partly because the feminine genius represents to us receptivity, a chalice, if you will. Mary herself, they, they speak forth the Marian dynamic to the world. And so you veil the chalice and you veil the feminine receptivity. So obviously you know what happens in the mass whenever we use the chalice. The chalice is blessed, it's set apart. Um, I want you to think of blessing as literally setting apart. When something's blessed, it's used for holy things. You're blessed often and you're set apart. You're not supposed to be of the world, even though you're in it. You're set apart for holy things and you don't take your chalice and pour Coke in it after, after mass and get some caffeine in you. No, it's only used for the mass. So it's blessed, it's set apart, it's sanctified. At the end of the mass, after all the precious blood is consumed, you would take the chalice. You might've seen a priest do this. He might put his fingers over the chalice and have someone pour water over his fingers. Why is he doing that? To purify his fingers. 
the, the vast majority of contact between the priest and the blessed sacrament, which is bo the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, happens with these fingers. And so those were purified. And then that water goes into the cup of the chalice. And you might see the priest rotating or, or turning around the water within the chalice. And that's to, to purify the inner cup. And so if water is just at the bottom, it's not really purifying the whole cup. So they, they turn it to maybe uh, clean off any fragments, particles of the Blessed Sacrament and uh, residual uh, parts of the, of the precious blood. Wiping it down with the purificator, right, which will be washed in a completely separate manner than we wash clothes normally to respect the Blessed Sacrament. And then, of course, we redress the chalice and, and move on from there. You might even ask yourself, is that all they do to clean it? No, once it's been purified, you can clean the chalice. It happens all the time in the sacristy. So it's come to my attention. Uh, sometimes people are like, whoa, they, they didn't really clean the chalice that well. You know, they didn't use soap and water. Well, we're not cleaning the chalice. We're purifying the chalice. It's a difference. We're not cleaning dishes. We're purifying a receptacle that held the precious blood Right? The body, blood, soul, and the divinity of Jesus. And so we treat it in a different way. We, it's, it's like a first cleansing. And then we might wash it later. I hope this clears up some of your ideas or questions you might have about the chalice and makes your experience of the Mass and what the priest sometimes does and the actions he takes. You can see the, uh, the reason and the point behind it. I'll end this video with uh, the prayer that the priest play, prays when he's purifying the chalice. He's praying throughout the Mass, even if you don't know it. Um, and, and this is the prayer that when he purifies the chalice and, and the paten and all the vessels. He says, What has passed our lips is food, O Lord. May we possess with purity of heart. And what has been given to us in time may be our healing for all eternity. Think about that prayer. We have received something in time. God has made himself incarnate in time. But it's going to be our healing, as he said in John chapter 6, for all eternity. May we make that our prayer every time we go to Mass. We can't wait till you, uh, till you can come back to church in the church building and receive the Eucharist with us.